what is going on everybody welcome to submission fishing live my name is muto your host as always every thursday welcome guys glad you could be here what's going on everybody what's new Let me turn down my light here a little bit Let's see what we got in here leonard Oos, what's going on welcome big water yak fishing welcome back man glad you can be here eric mmfc Oos, welcome working hard i imagine glad you're here tv metal art Welcome back. Welcome back. Down in SD1. Welcome. Oos, glad you can be here. Salty, what's going on? Jesse, Oos, everybody coming in. Awesome, guys. The usual crew, the band of troublemakers, the fishing experts. And one of those weeks, man. Busy week. Eventful week. It's like one of these days where it's like I'm rushing to get the show on. It's like you forget it's happening and then. I looked at my watch. It was already 7.01. Had to rush over here. Let's see. You fish with us Saturday night. Big Water Yak Fishing. No, I won't be fishing with him Saturday night. For those of you guys that don't know, um, Big Water's going out fishing. I think him, Eric, uh, Dario. I think quite a bit of people are going out there. I think they're going out of San Diego Bay on... Saturday night, right? I think you guys are going to launch at like 5 or 5.30 or something like that. I won't be there. Um, I'm not really into the night fishing, to be honest with you, too much. If I can fish the mornings and the days, it's definitely my time. But um, for anybody that wants to go fishing, uh, they're definitely going out there. So it'll be fun. It'll be a good time if you guys are wanting to go to the night fishing scene. I think they're doing a um, like a lure challenge. We did that last time we went out as a group where you fish with the jig and then the, whoever catches the biggest fish on the jig, um, they win a jig when one of the jigs that somebody has rigged up on their other thing. So it's pretty fun. I think there was only like a couple of us that did it last time and I had the biggest fish, but I'll be honest with you, man. I felt bad taking the jig. <laughs> I took, uh, I think I got one Eric's and then one of Zach. Zach didn't want to give up his jig. So I picked something else. I went for his free. He got a free one at the bait drop and I thought he was like, would want to part with like the, the free one or whatever, but he wanted to keep it. So I think I told you guys that story. He gave me the, um, I think it was some weird uh, weedless head with like a dragon tail on it. It's still a pretty cool jig. So it's a fun, fun little competition. Yeah. So launches at five, between five and six. Um, they're trying to get a big group. So yeah, check it out, guys. You don't have to be part of a club or anything like that. So. Oh, Alex. Yeah, Alex is going out too, I believe. Um, so that'll be cool. Nah, you, you can still win. Dude, just drop, go to the bait bars, drop a freaking, drop a 40 gram. Or I was actually like an 80 gram. If it's a big current, just go big, man. Those big fish will eat it. Arnie, what's going on, dude? Welcome. Glad you can make it. Down in SD1. Oh, we already gave you a shout out. Giving a shout out to Arnie. Dan, Welcome. In the pizza test kitchen with Eric's fancy new oven test every evening, everyone. Welcome, Dan. Welcome. Two geeks. What's going on, man? Yeah, those of you guys that don't know, we're having the Merry Macmas. So Dan is a opportunity for all of us to get together. Dan's making pizzas. He's bringing his pizza oven. And then I think Eric, uh, the Judge Lehman, he donated um, some sort of other, I don't know what it is, a pizza contraption of some sort. <laughs> I don't know if it's just another oven or what, but... He's going to be making pizzas for us, so we really appreciate that. Really looking forward to it. All right, let's see here. What do we got? The news, nothing local as far as fish reports. Everything looked pretty slow. Um, we do have uh, the big news. Uh, biggest news, I guess, so far is the – I know a lot of you guys have been seeing this going around. I've been seeing um, Instagram. has been Everybody's been posting it to their pages, so it's been making the rounds uh, big time. And it's the uh, California sheephead. And if you look at the CCA, California, it says that serious issue has developed involving sheephead and access. Coastal Conservation Association of California met with staff from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, today to discuss the current catch rate of the species. Uh, CDFW stated that the catch of sheephead by the regional angling is, protect, is projected to be 130% of what is allotted for the year. If this occurs, there is a serious consequence in the future access and regulatory process may be implemented. Conversely, if there is immediate action to avoid the take of the sheephead for the remaining of 2021, we can self-manage a positive result. CCA Cal is highly recommending 
that you try to avoid areas with concentrations of sheep head. Additionally, we highly encourage release, if possible, of sheep head. This is one of the few times we have the power to prevent future closures. We need to work together to prevent consequences of going over the allotment. Please help in the effort to spread the word. This is a sport boat. This is for sport boats and private boats. So that was the release. I know Roman talked about it on Fishy Hour a little bit. Um, I don't really know all the ins and outs, obviously. I'm a member of CCA. I've, I think I've got their sticker up there. Um, go to their events and stuff. I was signed up for their fishing trip, but it didn't happen. So I, I am a member, and I don't know, so, but I don't know the ins and outs of like the meeting and everything like that. I don't know how it went down or why they were talking about the sheep's head thing. Um, I'm sure Arnie in here might, might have a little more insight into that, but um, apparently, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Somehow the discussion of the California sheep head looks like it was brought up and it looks like the projected um, catch rate is going to exceed 130%. And obviously if that happens, I mean, you know, the drill California, they, they're going to crack down and could implement either, a higher size limit next year um or if not a size limit there could be like a bag limit you know and something like that so you know they're asking us to pump the brakes on the sheep head obviously if i catch any i'll throw them back um i don't think i'll be targeting them anymore this year we only have sheep that are protected from january to uh, march like any of the rockfish or any of the rockfish i'm sorry so We've, there's only like a month left left to fix them. So I don't know how far beyond or how far behind we are on the, or ahead, I guess I should say, how far ahead on the fish count we are because they're, yeah, like I said, we've only got about a month to go after December 1st. They're protected for three months. So um, I guess we can do what we can for the next month. You know, if you guys can pump the brakes on that, um, hopefully we can change it around. I mean, who knows with, I mean, California and the government, they're probably... <laughs> I hate to like send them all back and then they're just going to crack the whip anyway, anyways, and restrict the fishing. So who knows? It's not that big of a deal for me. You know, I don't mind not keeping them, but that's kind of going on with our, our sheep head. Uh, if you are going to catch them, you know, you still, you legally can. So um, just be aware of that, uh, of what's happening. I know the sport boat's been hitting it hard. Uh, this has been kind of the year for sheep head too. So I, I admit it's like, I think all of 2020, um, last year, I, I don't think I got any sheep head. Maybe you want on like a sport boat, but I don't think they targeted them or anything. And then this year, um, for some reason, admittedly, it became like it was like the hot fish this year. And I'm not sure why. I don't know if because other bites were slow or what, but it seemed like everybody was out there slaying the sheep head for sure. I know I've probably kept like eight this year. I've caught a whole bunch this year. And like prior to last year, it really wasn't a target fish, but. Um, I've gone out to the couple a few times just to target sheep head myself. So, and I know a lot of people put it on their list. I don't know if it was like a fish people haven't caught and then they suddenly got on it or something like that, it, but it was definitely weird. It seemed like it was the fish of the year for sure. If that makes sense in, in prior years, I don't really remember seeing like too much action on them, but it's just like, you know, there's been a lot of sheep head action for sure. And I've been a part of that as well. I, I've been catching, freaking way more than I, I normally have but so i'm gonna pump the brakes on it uh, i'm not gonna target them anymore like i said we got a month so you guys read the uh read the news you know read the make make your own decision on it you know i'm not here to make up your mind for you uh looks like everybody's pretty much from what i saw on instagram most people are looking to pump the brakes on it you know i can hold off on eating them for a little bit i don't know if everybody just found out they were delicious although not everybody likes them they're kind of a a funky tasting fish if you don't know what you're getting into but um yeah so the projection is, is 130 so i don't know i, I don't know if we're at 90 percent. i don't know if we're at 100 percent. what the what the only interesting thing to me is that if we're if they're already projected 130 percent and we've only got a month left like i kind of have to imagine we're statistically speaking got to be already at 100 or over 100 if that makes sense to you i mean i i doubt we're at 90 we're not going to pick up 40 percent in the last month of fishing. So um, that raises some questions too. You know, sometimes I see stuff like this and I'm always like, if we were fishing it so hard, why, why, why didn't we hear about this? Why didn't, you know, fishing game, let us know halfway through the year. I think they did that with the Pacific halibut. Um, it was getting crushed earlier in the year and then they shut it down. They were like, you know, no more. We've, 
they they caught that one. They they knew that the percentage or the quota was already met, and they shut down the Pacific halibut early, like way early this year, because people were going out and crushing it. So I don't know what took so long with the um. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know why the sheep head kind of thing is like sprung up on us. If you're coming up on 130%, obviously you guys, somebody probably had to have known sooner. I did. I don't know. That That's the only like thing I don't really understand. It's kind of like fishy, no pun intended about the whole thing, but maybe they just noticed, you know, and decided we get the word out. Um, and it says the CCA, it says the CCA talked to them too. So I don't know if they contact the CCA um, or if CCA went to them or if, I mean, that's kind of a weird thing too. Like it looks like they got brought in to discuss the species. So maybe they just suddenly kind of realized that there was something going on with them. So just to recap, it's on a uh, projection to do 130%. So if you guys don't want to eat them or not, not if you don't want to eat them, if you, if you don't want to keep them, if you guys want to help. So the idea with the, with the sending them back and not keeping them is that we can self police it. I guess that's the other part of this. So the idea is to not keep any more, um, and not even to target them because I, I know they do kind of have a high mortality rate. And if any of you guys have ever caught sheephead, you know, their air bladder usually always blows out of their stomach or, you know, their ass, like every time you catch them. So I don't know what the survival rate is with those things. So it, it, if you can avoid them, avoid them, you know, um, just don't use shrimp. Basically <laughs> you avoid the sheephead. They'll eat other stuff, but, uh, you know, if you, something you want to do and not target them. I just want to let you guys know that's what's going on. So the idea is in the push for this really and the whole purpose is to pump the brakes on it. Don't catch it. I'm, I'm guessing. So we don't hit the 130% and that it doesn't get regulated in the future. So I think we're trying to get to a point where we self police it so that uh, CDFW doesn't come in and then slap on regulations next year. So uh, do your own homework. You guys check it out. Like I said, I'm going to, I'll pump the brakes on the sheep head. And if you guys can do it too, let's see if we got the power to, to not turn it around. So I guess that's the, that's the biggest news. That's a, that's a pretty big news story. I just kind of found out about that one yesterday. So that's pretty big. If you guys have any sheep head, uh, updates or anything, let me know in the, in the chat here Let me catch up on the chat. Don't give the state, yeah, Arnie's saying, don't give the state any excuse to restrict our resources, right? <laughs> They're probably going to anyways. You know how government be. See Samurai, Kevin Nakata, what's going on? Glad you can make it. Kevin out there slaying as always. You guys follow him on uh, Fishing Rep. If you guys have any questions for um, Savage Gear, Savage Gear Baits, uh, Bubba Cutting Equipment, See Samurai's your guy. He's a representative for them, so... Do you have any questions, you know, about Savage Gear stuff? I know the that Salamander is like the hot hot Ned bait or hot Ned rig ticket for sure. Everybody's been slain on that thing. Fernando C, what's going on? Welcome. Yak Mob. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mark G, Oos, what's going on? Welcome. What else we got in here? I put some in the chat for shout outs for you. Yeah, I think we got everybody. Okay. Okay. Yochinator, welcome. I think that's how you say your name. <laughs> Snags and drags. Welcome. Another one. You guys see everybody typing oos on the oos in the chat. It basically just means that they've liked the show. Um, so if you guys like the show, please uh, press oos, hit the like button. That'll help get us out there in the uh, algorithm. Share the stream if you know people like fishing. Help us grow this thing. San Diego fishing, saltwater fishing. We're just fishing in general. I guess you don't have to be saltwater. Yeah, guys, we're just talking about the, the whole sheephead thing tastes good weird texture though yeah it's super soft like it's uh it's it's almost mushy like the, the sheep head for sure i think if you give it to somebody and they didn't know what they were getting into they probably wouldn't like it it's like when you set it up like oh it kind of tastes like lobster it kind of tastes like crab it's like it, it builds up in your head what it should be and then it's like it's a little more acceptable i think lucky lucky not good was uh talking in discord and he said he didn't like the the sheep head at all said it tasted like crap so I can definitely see that. It definitely has a taste. If you're somebody that's like, um, like if you like really mild fish, sheephead probably isn't the fish for you, you know, because it, it has like a, a certain distinct taste to it. If you want kind of like a tasteless fish, stick with like some of the rockfish, uh, bass too. Like I think uh, barred sand bass is super, super mild. Yeah, sheephead is definitely a thing. Just type in 
California Sheephead on YouTube. I did. I shared the link. Oh, nice. Can you really see that? Sorry, guys. Just checking up here. Zachary Riggs, welcome. Did I already say what's up to you? Maybe I did. Michael Myers. That's what I'm going to start calling you from now on. The catch numbers are posted every day. All the landings, very easy. Nice. Yeah, so that's what I was wondering, uh, see Samurai. Like if everybody was like, um, if, if they could see the numbers and stuff every day, like um, I don't know. I, I don't know why they, they took so long to really bring it up. You know what I mean? Yeah, every sport boat on the water has been crushing it too. Uh, sorry, guys. I got it. My wife was talking to me. Can you really just say that you realize we're nearing and just looking? As, yeah, Arnie, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. Crazy. Like, I don't know how you just come up on that. Uh, survey the launch ramp. Let's see here. Just guess talking about the sheep header. Yeah, snags and drags. That's what we were talking about, the whole sheep head thing. First thing on the news for sure. Let's see. Ooh, there we go. We got the ooses coming in. Better than a sand bass. Yeah, I mean I, I agree. But it depends. Like I was I was saying somebody didn't didn't like the sheep head, so. Um, sand bass, I think, is more mild. Sheephead has taste, is like my point. Like, it, it's got a very, very, very distinct kind of taste. Bro, will sesame oil and blacken. Yeah, dude, that's good. Heck yeah. Uh, if you skin them immediately and poach the meat, they're close to crab meat and are too easy to shoot while spearfishing. So, asking the spirit to back off a little bit. Of well, yeah, I saw that too. Somebody was saying, like, they're they come up right, they're like not really scared and they get spearfished. That's interesting. I've never heard of poaching. Uh, uh, sheephead before now you make me want to go out and catch one and try to poach it <laughs> but i'll wait i'll wait till march we'll hold off spiros hardly get checked the council's 40s need to come down yeah um that's a sea samurai say and uh kevin's talking about the sport boats just crush those things and I, i've heard some things saying like they've you know they fished out a lot of bass and stuff like that and um you know so they're going for sheephead and you know, a lot of times they got to pad the numbers and get the numbers up so they over, go over and find them and stuff like that. And I think the spears, uh, spear fishermen have different. I don't think they have to stop during the um, the January 1st to March 31st. I, don't quote me on that, but I think it's a lot of fish that we're regulated with fishing on vessels, boats and stuff like that are typically open to shore based anglers and um, and spear fishermen. So we get if, if you're fishing from like a kayak or a boat. They, they make you pump the brakes and there are certain times, but I, a lot of stuff is still open to shore base, shore base and spear anglers. But yeah, hey, I, I don't think they're the problem. They're, they're not the ones going out there, you know, harvesting 50 at a time. Um, One second, guys. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Had some technical difficulties. Wife was giving me a I'm assisting. giving me some assistance. I like to release bass and sheep, snags and drags. Awesome, dude. Push the size limit to fourteen. TV metal art. Yeah, it'll probably it's twelve right now. I think right. And I mean that might not be the worst thing. I, I don't think it's that hard to catch a fourteen-inch uh, sheep head. To be honest with you. So 12, 14, I heard some people saying maybe just make it so you catch only the males, you know, make sure it's got like the real black bars on the head and the back. You know, who knows? We'll see. Very valid argument was the last time with JFV checking sport boats. Yeah. Can you catch and release uh, sheeps during the months? Uh, snags and drags. Well, obviously they don't want you targeting them, you know, is the thing. So I, I think that goes with all rockfish. So whitefish, I think are exempt. I'll have to look. You can look on like Fish League or you can just look on the website. Um, like halibut are exempt, but I think the rockfish, you can't target them. So you basically, 
you can't go out with the intention and the purpose of catching rockfish and sheephead um, or those certain ground fish is what they call them. So, you know, if you're out there pulling out multiples or, you, you know, your hook, or if your setup is like set up for you looking like you're looking for rockfish and sheephead, you're probably going to get dinged. If you catch one, obviously you just have to release it. You're not going to get in trouble if like, you know, you're, you're looking for halibut or fishing for calicos or something like that. Um, off of the side, if you happen to kept, you know, cause bycatch happens, it happens all the time. Like if you catch a black sea bass, um, just release it. You, you don't bring it on the boat, take care, uh, let the thing out. Same thing. If you catch a cow cod, you, you gotta, gotta send it back down. You can't prevent catching certain fish. It's the targeting of fish. So don't go out there looking for sheephead just to release sheephead. If that makes sense. And that goes for rockfish too. For these of you guys that are just joining, it's like, it's the fish between, um, I think January 1st and March 31st or something like that. So yeah, if you're, if you got like a dropper loop on or something with a piece of shrimp on it and you're, looks like you're pulling up sheep head. So you can't fish them just to release them. If that makes sense. If they're bycatch and you catch one, just release it. You should be fine. Just, just don't target. So if that, if that makes sense to you, harvest only the males and if finished transition cave dog. Yeah. I, I've heard that was going on too. Or a lot of the argument, or not the argument, but a, a fix to it is possibly thing. I have a weird aversion to sport boats. They're on paper, they sound good, get people fishing, but they need to produce numbers for picture, for people to believe in them. Yeah, that that's the argument I've been seeing too. Because it, it's true though, right? When you go on a sport boat, I do the same thing. I fish a lot of sport boats, um, and you want to see numbers, right? Nobody wants to get on a sport boat that's like you went out and they're like, oh, they haven't caught a damn thing, they haven't caught any fish, so they do this thing where it becomes sort of this thing, even between within the boats where they're trying to outfish everybody, right? It's their name. It's their business. Everybody wants numbers. They want numbers. Um, so I get that. And yeah, it's just kind of a, kind of a weird thing, but what do you do? Right. It's, it's not an easy thing because sport boats, people are paying, they're paying to go out and catch fish too, right? You don't want to go out there, pay a hundred bucks or 60 bucks, especially if you're visiting and going out and then you don't catch anything or, you know, I, I like I see it both ways. Nobody wants to go out there and have a captain being conscious of the fish when you paid to go on a boat. You just want to catch. So it, it's like it's it's that tug and pull right with everybody. It's like people that fish all the time, like ourselves, we kind of understand it. I, I don't know if there, there there's a good answer. I think maybe the only thing is to up the size limit because then you can still fish them, but then you, you know that it forces a it just forces the, the number. It limits the number that can be kept just based on size, right? They did that with all the bass, um, kelp bass and stuff like that. And so, I mean, we'll see. One second. Sorry, you guys. A terrible show. <laughs> Can't be breaking like that. Should have had this all set up prior. Let's see here. Haven't kept up with the news lately. I'm assuming sheephead are now off limits. Fernando C. No. Um, sheephead is, if you just go on Instagram and stuff, you can see sheephead is basically CCA met with um, um, CFW, CDFW, whatever it is. And there were CDFW was saying that we're approaching 130% of what their, what the catch was going to be or what their projections were. So um, CCA California is suggesting that we just catch less and release them. So you can still technically fish them if you want to go out and get them. It's kind of a community thing. It's a group thing, basically saying, let's get together and release them. Don't target them. Don't catch them. So we're trying to self-police ourselves. So basically we're going to throw them back or not catch them to try to keep the number down. So we don't get any restrictions imposed on us. So nothing yet. I mean, there, there's nothing, um, um, nothing concrete yet. We're just, we're trying to avoid, I guess the, hopefully not the inevitable, um, collapse of the sheephead fishery. 
Worst case, I think probably they'll put a bag limit or something. There's no signs from a reputable source of fishermen unless it's done by fishermen. See some right, yeah. That's true. Alex, I agree. Salty. I haven't kept up with the news. Sorry, guys. I'm just catching up on the chat here. Man, you guys are going ham. Tell them what's up, Miss Mito. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, Fernando. All right, guys. So, yeah, that's that. If you guys have any more sheephead questions, uh, that's that's the limited knowledge I have. I don't think any of us really know what's going on with it. We're just like, um, we're kind of in the, kind of all in the same boat, just trying to avoid the uh, potential catastrophe. Let's see here. We got the outing. Yeah, I got the boat. Oh, speaking of sport boats, I have the um, updated my boat. So you guys know, those of you follow the show, now, I was getting a boat. So I don't have to go in the sport boats anymore. But um, it was supposed to be here in November, right? And then we called them today. What do you guys think happened? Of course, you already know what was going to happen. What I knew was going to happen. There's been a delay on it. So it was supposed to be here this month and then get it by Thanksgiving. And it's just like anything else in the world. They're waiting on the Yamaha engine. And it's nobody knows it's somewhere on the ship parked somewhere in, in one of these docks. So um, it's backed up in the system like everything else. I guess the boat is done, uh, but there's no there's no motor. So the motor on the boat is, you know, obviously Yamaha. I think it, it comes from Japan. So we're waiting on the motor. Nobody knows. Nobody has an ETA. Nobody knows when it's going to be here. Uh, but I fully expected that. I mean, you guys know that I, I didn't get my hopes up for anything like I was going to have it. So boat is on delay. Waiting on the engine, typical supply problems that everybody's dealing with kind of sucks, but what can you do? I knew that was coming down the pipe. Tyler Doan, what's going on, man? There's an arena with a pilot house next to my boat, and it's a sick little boat. Nice, dude. Yeah, I think that's the one I'm getting, the Arima Yellowtail. Uh, it's the pilot house boat, um, Sea Chaser 19. So I, I guess the boat's done. Snags and drags, and that's what you do martial arts. Snags and drags, do so I do martial arts? Yes, sir. That is how I got the name of uh, submission fishing. I'm currently a brown belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Uh, I train out of Alliance. Um, Alliance is their main headquarters in, in San Diego. I train out of Carlsbad. Uh, prior to that, I've done, um, I actually did Kung Fu when I was younger, uh, Muay Thai. I did MMA when I was like um, in my late 20s, you know, boxing, mixed martial arts. But as currently, I just do um, pretty much just focus on, on Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So that was the blend of the whole submission fishing. Um, there was lots of parallels between, um, jujitsu and martial arts and fishing. Um, really it's getting the black belt and fishing. That was the whole point of submission fishing was not only my quest to get a black belt in fishing, but to get everybody a black belt in fishing, you know, I want to make products, um, give knowledge, start the show and basically get everybody in the, a, a black, black belt in fishing, strive to get a black belt in fishing. That's kind of the motto. So, um, there's not really a. A, a scale in fishing, right? But you know the black belts, right? There's not many of them, and there won't ever be many of them. It's just like anything, even in true martial arts like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, there's actually very few black belts. It's not like karate or some of these things, you know, where kids get belts. It usually takes a decade or more to get a black belt, and there's very few, just like in fishing. Um, it takes about a decade, you know, to really learn and get. So that was the whole genesis of the submission fishing, was kind of the take the martial arts aspect of getting the black belt. Uh, to get a black belt in fishing, I just thought it was a cool concept. It, it gives me something to strive for, you know, like um, when you see somebody and you're like, oh, yeah, that dude, he, he's definitely a black belt in fishing for sure. Muto. This is like the brake rotors for me. That's why I can't, can't get them. Oh, yeah, you can't get your brake rotors stuck on so many container ships all the way down. To instant, yeah. What can you do, man? Hook up a Bixby motor or a couple of them. I mean, it's cool. I, I like the kayak. I got the PA-14. I mean, it's fine. I don't mind fishing off of it. I mean, I'll wait. Like I said, I wasn't planning on... Um, I, I I pretty much figured there was going to be a boat delay. Just just the way things were going. Uh, production, everything has just been a pain in the ass. Yeah, we have the same thing, too. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, I own a plumbing company up here in North County. And we're having trouble getting garbage disposals, pipe fittings. It's, it's everywhere. It, it's a big disaster i mean i even products submission fishing products um what see at the bottom no 
Um, so all that other all that stuff, it's we we get this. Yeah, so we got the um, we got that. I got uh, my waiters came in, you guys. So we got um, I'm going out to La Jolla th this weekend to fish. Like I said, guys, everybody else is going out to uh, San Diego Bay. So if you want to fish with them um, Saturday night, go out with them. That's cool. We're going out. I think me, Oscar, uh, Mark G. I'm gonna head out to La Jolla. So if anybody wants to join, we'll probably be there early. Uh, I've never really fished La Jolla in the winter, so it's pretty cool. I, what I ended up doing was getting some cheap waders. I didn't spend a whole lot of money on them. They were like maybe 70 bucks, 65 bucks. Um, I got neoprene waders, so they're like um, yeah, wetsuit material, but they still stay dry. They're like 100% dry. Um, you know, you don't get wet or anything, but they look pretty warm. They just came in probably like 10 minutes before the show started. So I'll give you guys an update on that, see how they hold up. I'm not into the cold water. The cold water is not that cold, but. When it's windy out, it's not like last week where it was freaking 90 degrees. You guys see that? I don't know if any of you guys fish, but it was like 91 degrees here in Carlsbad. I went fishing down at the bay and it was, I think, like 88 degrees or something crazy. It was like the hottest day of the year <laughs> in the middle of winter. Who's up with that? And then it got cold again. So I was pretty awesome. I did get the waders. So I'm super excited. Um, it should be really fun. Never fished with them before. So we'll see what happens. Um, maybe we'll get on some yellowtail. So I'm going to probably be prepared. I'm going to bring some bait, you know, the, the same program, probably bring some squid and even frozen squid. If we can't make any, um, I heard somebody was saying there was, um, they got on the bite with some sardines and stuff like that. So, um, you know, ho hopefully we get in there and get some, if not, we can go rock fishing. No sheephead this time though. I promise. Not gonna model them for us. <laughs> Let's see, what we're paying for here, <laughs> dude. They're so funny. They're like, um, <laughs> they're like overalls. They look so cheesy. They're they're like they're not they're not that nice. They're, <laughs> but I'll try them out if I like them and if it's the size I, I want it. That's something I want to do. Like if I think I'm gonna fish, um, you you know, winters on in La Jolla or like colder water. Definitely, I'll go get some. But I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I don't have my. I didn't want to break the bank and spend like five hundred dollars on a on some Aftco ones or Sims. There, there's some really nice ones, but uh, neotene doesn't breathe, so your sweat could get moist. Yeah, I saw that, Jesse. That's why there was like breathable, and not breathable. I don't sweat that much, luckily, so I should be okay. Uh, really sealing the flavor there. Yeah, dude. We just dump them out, chum the water with some sweat. No sheep. I mean, you you can get the sheep, Mark. I mean, I, I, you shouldn't be. If you want sheephead, go get sheephead. You know, I don't don't be they're still legal to catch. Don't be pressured to have to do you know what everybody else is doing. So I think everybody can make up their own decision. If you want to really get one, I don't think it's going to destroy the whole ecosystem. I think it's mostly the boats going out there and dropping thirty bombs. <laughs> you know, just going to a kelp bed and destroying it. I, I don't think kayakers are really the problem. I mean, what do we usually keep one or two? We, we threw a lot back. I went out with uh, Brian and we caught a whole bunch and we threw probably. I did keep two that day, but I sent a whole bunch back. Some questions in there for you. Yeah, so we'll check out the uh, winter fishing. Uh, super exciting. Let's see here. Salty. Oh, yeah. I'm going to model it for us. Now I can drag the team or kelp. He asked that twice. Asked the what? Snags and drags. Do you think the team or kelp will be here this winter? snags and drag do you think the t mark help will be here this winter i hope so i guess we'll find out uh you just never know do i think it will i'm gonna say yes just because we can go go check out go by captain dan's and set up at his house and go out there let's see you bring in your blankie yeah <laughs> i am gonna bring the blankie well if i need the waiters i might not need the blankie as you guys are asking, one day we went out to La Jolla, dude. It was so freaking cold. I wrapped myself up in a little blanket like a towel. I think it helped, though, dude. The blanket was the bomb. It was really good. 
going to be a great victory when we do our, reduce our catch numbers and show the state that we take issues by ourselves. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope so, I, Kevin. I, I, I hope that's the case. You just never know. I, I, what I what I what I hate or what I don't want to see is we go out and do it. We hit it hard. We reduce the catch, and then they're going to be like, "Oh well, I mean, it was so close, anyways, and it's going to be a problem in the future." And here's the restrictions, you know, and just drop the hammer. That's the only thing that was like you, you don't really know like what the freaking you don't know where they're getting the information or the numbers and stuff. It's hard to say. But we we definitely want to protect it. I mean, you don't want to outfish the damn thing, and then we don't have any fish to catch. Kelp is here. Should be a good winter. Oh, Captain has said the kelp's there already, so that's good. There you go. He lives right there by the area you were talking about. One that was 14 a couple. So, all right, so let's see. We got the, we got the waiters. Oh, yeah, so some of you guys I wanted to talk about. I know last week I talked about hooks on, like, um, slow pitch jigging, and I saw – some people doing hooks, but there was a couple things that I wanted to bring up um, as far as hooks go. So bring you guys a little edu education on the hooking setup. So there's hooks that are specifically set up for slow pitch jigging. And then you can set up assist hooks for just general jigging, uh, long fall jigging or fast jigging when you're not um, going off of structure. So one of the things or one of the setups that you'll commonly see <clears throat> is that the assist hooks, double assist hooks, when you're doing slow pitch is that they face each other. These are slow pitch hooks. This is another setup. You see how they inherently touch. Uh, this is what you want when you're fishing near a structure and stuff like that. But hooks don't always come set up like this. Like um, here's one of uh, Savage Gears. This is a line through spoon. This one came to me. Compliments of a uh, sea samurai here in the chat. We went out fishing on his boat. And you see here where the hooks are facing outwards and they're not dipping into each other. So we weren't fishing bottom structure with this with this lure. This is a line through spoon and it goes through. So when you're fishing in the mid column and the water column, it's okay to have the hooks out like this. Actually, it's probably preferable, but you see how they set. They're facing outwards. So when you're getting fishing pelagics and stuff like that on the slow pitch, um, you can really set up the hooks any way you want. And you actually might want to set up the hooks outwards. Um, facing out that way when you get a bite the really biting these things you're getting the hook and you're setting up your um your fish for success based on the bite but the reason you don't want to do that when you're fishing structure is that you just to, you increase the strag or um snags and stuff like that this is my jig that i crush on um rockfish catching monster rockfish with this thing we went out with kevin just destroying huge bocaccio um caught a monster cow cod that we released and you can see here I have the, the hook slow pitch setup style. They got a little mangled because of the way they were sitting. But this way, you have a better chance of bouncing off the rocks. I don't run any in the front because rockfish, you got to only fish the two hooks. So you can have one on the front, one on the back, or you do the two. But that's how I run them on the back. If you fish them where they're setting the long ways, where they come like that, you're going to have a lot more opportunities where you're going to get snagged. This also goes for the docks and everything else. So remember, when you're hooking up your, your hooks and you want slow pitch hooks, make sure they're this way. You see, these hooks, they come this way with the with the rope. There's a single string, and they're already tied. So these hooks come like this. You can't hook them up the other way. There's no way you can really screw this up. You're going to put them on. But as you're bouncing, you know, you're going to get the hooks, and, and they're going to bounce off the rocks. Is it foolproof? No. You're still going to get snags and stuff like that, but you can reduce it. But um, in some situations, you get hooks like this. And these are, are slow pitch hooks. But you see these ones are not tied on one line. They're two independent lines. So if you jig them or you buy these hooks out of the pack and you're going to rig something up, well, if you hook them up like that, now suddenly you, you're, you're facing your hooks outwards. See how they're two independent hooks? You can jig this however you want or rig it up. So if you rigged it up like this and you, you weren't even thinking about it and you're going to go fish rock fish or fish the docks or anything, I guarantee you this is going to snag every freaking thing that you can possibly get snagged on. So when you get the ones that are two hook, make sure when you're rigging it, if you want to go slow pitch style, you face them inwards and you want your hooks facing inwards. When the fish bites, they're still going to pinch it and get hooked. 
see when they pinch that'll go in and you're still going to get the hooks but as they're fluttering around you got a better chance that they're going to bounce off of stuff um and structure like i said not 100 percent foolproof um you know it could absolutely still get caught and snagged it's not like you're never going to get snagged if you go like this but i just thought it was something to bring up because i've been seeing some of you guys jigging or i've been seeing other other people doing it and they, they've either got the wrong setup um if i'm going heavy structure so like when i'm fishing my micro jigs they all come different too from the box so when they're mass produced they're not always the same when they come out of like um like a major craft box or something like that and that's something something to look at as well like this one has the two hooks forward or one hook forward one hook back and one thing you have to realize is you're probably going to get a pretty good bite from the top but the lure is going to come up this way because that's the way you pull it from the boat even when it lays down and you're on your kayak when you yank it forward it's going to come up like that the back hook is in the perfect position it's going to slide these usually come with a treble hook which i always take off so th this if you guys don't want to lose jigs this is the way to do it take the treble hook off put another assist hook on the back but an even better way to do it if you don't want to get the snags is you do it this way put the hooks both facing backwards because now when it goes up see how it doesn't snag when you pull it the hooks are going to hit the rocks and, and it's going to come up when they're hooked this way like I'm, there's no way i'm rubbing my finger this way but if there's a rope on the ground there's um, clams mussels or whatever it is when you go to even though you're fishing this vertical when you go to pull it up it's still going to come up at an angle and it's still going to launch towards you and when that hook is facing in it's just more chance to dig in so when you got them facing back the other way See, I don't mind rubbing my fingers on it this way. It's not going to hook. So when you yank it and it's sitting on the floor and you yank it up, there's less chance that you're going to catch a rope, um, rope, muscles, whatever whatever it may be. So um, there might be some debate as to whether do you catch more fish with them out. This one is, is both ways. I think this one is like um, both turned in, which is even different. So the front one would skip and then the back one would catch. And what's funny is that these aren't always, the, the hooks are not always the same on these. They're, they're rigged up differently for major craft. So um, that's definitely something to be aware of. So when you're taking one out of the box, check the hooks. And um, it'll catch fish either way, whether the hooks are. But if you want to reduce snags, make sure the hooks are turned away from the thing. Because when you're fishing docks, dude, you're going to get freaking, you're going to snag like crazy. You're going to hook everything on those things. And um, if you really 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 getting snagged like when i'm at the bait barge this is what i fish i don't even put back hooks so i've got the slow pitch hooks with their bolts facing inwards you see that so those are designed to kind of bounce around off of structure and stuff like that and i don't run anything on the back a bass is going to eat this it'll be plenty it'll come up and eat it i've hooked tons of fish on a setup like this even like 130 gram jigs i've been running catching sand bass so if i think i'm really 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 fishing structure there's pipes and stuff down there i won't even run a back hook i'll run it just like this with the slow put slow pitch style hooks so just some some food for thought for you guys um keep in mind how your hooks are set and just because you take it out of the package don't just take it for granted that um especially with their single hooks that they're set up the same way um, if you don't care about losing jigs it's not a big deal um you know do you have a lower hookup ratio kevin i think you do when you take when you take the back hook off um i think for sure like like with this normally i would run hooks on the bottom too like when i'm fishing sand bass at the bait barge but if you guys saw that video where i was killing it a lot of them i didn't even i wasn't even running back hooks um so i think it i think it will hook up obviously the more hooks you have the better your hookup ratio will be um, they make these miniature jigs too like the slow version that have like two hooks on the front and one on the back so there's three hooks on the little thing so i think obviously the more hooks you have you will have a better hookup ratio it, but it's one of those things but how many if you lose your jig on like the first cast how many fish are you going to catch you know on and at that point but i think it is a little bit of a trade-off it when you're fishing again tuna yellowtail um the pelagics when you're jigging i would actually say probably go outside hooks um for a better hookup ratio um hook it up like the one i had your your line through with and this one's got the, the two hooks as well. 
So you can really just flip these around and have it go, have it go either way. So if you can find the one with the two, you can do it. You can do it. And even the one with the single line, how these ones are in, even though it's a single line, you can loop that and then have them face the outside. So you can re-loop it and have them sitting like that. The ones that have the string on it, you're, you're stuck to whatever that string right here. You're pretty much tied to whatever the, the manufacturer wants you to do. But if you're buying some that are facing outwards and you want a fish structure, uh, just, just keep that in mind. So just thinking of you guys, thinking of your pocketbook. Um, and just a little tip for me, for me to you, because I hate losing jigs. I would say take the treble hook off. You know, you can do um, single hooks and stuff like that. And also, when you're jigging, guys, make sure that you're tying on the right side. If you're doing a clip like I do, make sure it's on top of the nose so that the hook is facing downwards. Because if you clip it here and you're just not paying attention, you know, and you throw a clip on this side, the hook isn't going to, it's going to be sitting up here and it's going to be all funky. And your hook's going to be wobbling on top and it's not going to be able to wrap around the, you know, the, the jig. So put it on here and that way it swings freely and then the bottom is the bottom and then the hook is landing where it should be landing. And you could also run single hooks too. I actually run this one at the bait barge with just a single hook. It actually goes down that way. And this one has eyes that are facing vertically. And then just the single hook. And this one's facing out, but I only run the one hook. And then I crush at the bait barge with this thing too. But then I just run the one hook. This is this is how I run it. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Just some tips that I've I've noticed from doing the jigging game. Um, if you don't want to lose some, like I said, you can do it the other way, and it's not a hundred percent. I mean, you're gonna run into situations where you're gonna send it down. You're still gonna get stuck. You're still gonna lose jigs. Um, there's there's nothing you can do to avoid that, uh, unfortunately. But just some tips. If you guys have any questions, let's see here. Someone asked what's the smallest hook we use, but Brian says he's in. Let's see here. Interesting. Less snags. Yeah, you guys. Last weekend you were fishing in a tank top. Now you need waders. Dude, it was so hot last week. Yeah, now it's freezing. It's totally true, Jesse. That's pretty sad. You just ate Christopher Martinez. Welcome. I don't know if I've seen you in here. Welcome to the show. You just ate some sheep last night. How was it? I'm assuming good if you ate it. You're probably one of those guys. Do you ever add a hoochie or a squid shirt to the assist hook? Um, <clears throat> no, I usually don't. I'll add like the little the flash to it, um, like these little ones got the um, got the flash for sure. On the bigger ones, not really. I've heard of people doing it, but I think it kills the action when you add like too much squid. Like it doesn't. The whole point is you want the jig doing the work and doing the fall. I think if you've got a big chunk of squid um, on the back, it just I don't think it falls properly. At least that's my sense. I saw some dude put a whole squid on one on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> he was like throwing it down. He didn't get bit or anything. They still might bite the squid. I mean, it's not to say you won't get bit. I mean, if they see the squid, you know, they'll definitely eat it for sure. So um, I'm sure it'll work. I don't think it'll help the action of the jig is the only thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, the mylar. The smallest hook you would use. No, a chunk of rubber squid. The smallest hooks I've used? Oh, I use the, I don't know what the sizes are, but. What would you, the smallest you would go. I'll use the little tiny ones. I don't mind. I don't use super big hooks. If I'm looking for rockfish guys, I'll use the big hooks, like um, five aught, three aught. You know, pretty big ones. These these ones aren't even huge, but these these ones are pretty damn big. And I throw these on all the time. Obviously, it depends what I'm targeting. I fish everything from spotted bay bass, uh, um, you know, to tuna, rockfish. I've caught everything on these things, so it really depends on the target will dictate the jig let's see here i 
fishing this weekend. Yeah, we've got that. Yeah, I just got a, um, like Jesse was saying, if you guys check it out, I had a new video go up where I was fishing the bays. I'm getting ready for the, um, was it the DFA, DFA tournament? Doing a little pre-fishing, checking my kayak. Yeah, so my kayak didn't leak. If you guys were keeping up, I had a leak in my kayak, and, or at least I thought I had a leak. Obviously, I can't find it anywhere. Um, I took it to Fast Lane. They couldn't find the leak. Um, you know, they checked it out. They had it for a few days. They air tested and everything. And then I took it out. Uh, took it out to Mission Bay. Couldn't find anything. I fished probably like three hours. I wasn't out there very, you know, too long. Probably maybe four hours. Late day, I went out. The sun, once the sun went down, I packed it in. But I, I didn't see anything. No water. It was pretty bone dry. So who knows, man? I don't. You know, we've checked the checked the drain plugs, checked everything on it, even the day that it, that we went out. So that was the day that it was leaking. We checked everything, and then when I went out the next day or the next week after they checked everything, we really couldn't find any leaks. So I guess that's a good thing. We'll take it out in La Jolla and see. I guess if it takes on water over the bow, we can. It was super flat. Um, there was no wakes. Nothing went over the, the top. So the good part is we can rule that out um, on the flat water, on the calm water. We didn't have any issues whatsoever. So. Um, it's good news. And then we'll take it out on the rougher seas this weekend and see. So if it takes takes on a wave or if it starts, you know, in the bigger waters, we probably know that the problem is um, a little higher up on, on the system or on the scale. I hope it doesn't leak. I, I Hopefully it was just a fluke thing. I mean, I don't want to have uh, anything fixed or anything like that. Chris had a question. Third from the bottom. Have you ever thought about rigging up? A Sala 6X yo-yo with assist hooks and bounce it upside down. Uh, I've thought about it. I've never done it. Uh, honestly, um, Chris, I don't like I I just get the slow pitch jig. I just buy the jigs that are made for it, you know. Uh, it would probably work. I don't I don't I don't see why not, you know, because what do they just put on those? The big treble hooks on the back. Um it, it would probably be fine. Because if you're just yo-yo fishing, um, the advantage to the um, the assist hooks is that they they flow with the water, right? When they when it goes down, the hooks go down with it. So when it's going down, the hooks go down. When they bite, when it comes up, the hooks go up. At least that's the idea is that the fish will bite one end. And with the salus, it just has the um, the treble hook. But it might work. We should give it a shot. You guys think you took on water while it was sitting at the beach of the bait drop? It could, it could have Leonard. I, I that that was the other thing. Kevin, what does Savage here? All right, guys, we're getting close. I think we have a um, have a special guest tonight, guys. Um, somebody's just phoning me in, so this is really weird. I don't know what's going on, but somebody says they really want to come on the show. Hold on, guys. Let, let me let me figure this out. As we were trying to figure out earlier, it was. Somebody's like to really, really tell me they want to come on right now, and really strange. Who do we got here? Oh no! Oh no! You guys know this guy. He's invading the stream. What's up, Buto? What's up? How are you? I'm fantastic. What's up, fellas? How's everybody doing? They're doing good. They're doing good. Well, Brian likes to fish you. everybody. The new DFA man. Take it away. <laughs> One second, please. So if you guys didn't know, on the other channel, they will not let me do movie reviews. So guess what? I'm coming across this, this channel, and I'm going to do a movie review, Muto. <laughs> so I cannot see you anymore, Muto. Split screen me. We're not going to play that game here. If you want to, <laughs> we don't get shut down by the man. If you want to come That's on here right. and you want to do a video, we're here for the rebels. That's right. I go where I want to go. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we do All what right. we want to do here. That's right. Uh, it, last night's show got a little crazy, guys. So, oh, what am I still wearing these? Last night's show got a little crazy. If you guys don't know, I'm Brian Likes to Fish on Instagram. I've been sharing my knowledge for like uh, two years on my channel on Fishy Hour. Uh, for some reason, though, Muto, it's so weird. Like, I've been talking about fishing for, like, over a year and a half, how to fish the bays, and all people want me to do is movie reviews. <laughs> Imagine that, dude, all that knowledge. Well, I know. that's your skill, dude. I mean, 
You got to go yeah. where your need is. You know, sometimes we think we have a passion, but we're just, we're not cut out for the passion. Sometimes you got to do what you're good at. And yours is the movie reviews. I don't want to be good at this. I won't be good. <laughs> <laughs> It started, it started as like a joke and it's, I don't know, gotten pretty serious. What's up, Cal? What's up, Eric? Somebody vandalized my dumpster this morning. I think I know who. <laughs> there was a sign that said MMFC out in front of my dumpster. Man, once they saw the DFA mean? shirt, I mean, it was the DFA shirt. It, it, I think it, it, it sent some people off, man. You got enemies now. This is not going to be Whatever. the same. You're going to have Bring to sort that out. I can't protect right, so, you from everything. These guys uh, are crazy. I, I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully seeing you guys Saturday night on the water. I'll be out there with my new crew. We'll be slaying out there. Uh, if anybody ever wants to come out on my boat too, message me uh, at Brian Likes Fish on Instagram. Uh, I try, I'm trying to, now to take somebody out every week to uh, show them some fishing areas, show them some fishing skills. So I'm happy to do that right now. So yeah. let me know. If you guys I've taken out Ruto and Cal, you, yeah. I've taken out Eric, I've taken out Salty, I've taken out a lot of these guys. These guys are all awesome fishermen. I always try to learn from them. Hopefully, I'm sharing a little knowledge right on the water, yeah. too. I Absolutely. learned a lot from Muto, the slow pitch, slow pitch jig king. <laughs> so I'm going to title jester. you. I like the jester. <laughs> the jester, whatever. <laughs> Taught me a lot. All right. So if you guys don't know, normally I do a movie review. Uh, me and Roman, uh, both like 80s and 90s movies. Hopefully, Muto, you watch some movies, too. So I'm going to review three movies tonight by popular demand. I don't know why, but hey, let's do it. All right. First movie up. Uh, you know, I grew up in the 80s. And when this came out, it was like a big hit. And the reason I'm reviewing it is because I hear that they are making a remake of this movie, which I think would be awesome because uh, video games have gotten so much better than they were in the 80s. Um, but this, this is a, a movie where a kid basically plays an arcade game and he's so good at it. Somebody from outer space flies in to say, hey, you're so good at this video game. We're going to fly you out to outer space to help defend our planet. And uh, that movie would be The Last Starfighter. Have you seen this, Muto? They cannot hear you. So The Last Starfighter uh, came out. Dude, I've seen it. I actually love that movie. It. When I was a kid, I'm a huge gamer. I mean, like a lot of the guys in here. I mean, one of my favorite pastimes is playing video games. So it's like, dude, that you game was legit. Yeah. You may you may be a little young for when this first came out, dude, but I came out in 1984. And you yeah, know what? The pinnacle involved. years of movies were 1984 to 1986. Some of the Star Wars movies came out then. Back to the Futures came out then. That 84 to 86, Indiana Jones came out then. Ghostbusters came out then. It was like a crazy year. And those movies that are from 1985, they're remaking them all. Like new Ghostbusters comes out this week, and I'm probably going to go see that. Hey, Eric, let's go. Ghostbusters, IMAX. Show you what a theater. I'll show you how to get <laughs> what to the theater theater's all about. Get in there. <laughs> yeah. So, Last Starfighter. I'm giving this four out of five max. It holds up pretty good. The CG in it. Don't expect it to look like Avengers Endgame. It's kind of basic, but hey, that was the '80s. It was a big deal back then. Uh, next movie. Uh, this movie. Uh, it's Jim Henson movie. It stars David Bowie. It always kind of like creeped me out. There's some creepy like Muppet characters in this. Going into this, you're thinking Kermit. You're going Miss Piggy. It's a Jim Henson movie. David Bowie's in this. He wears some really tight pants that are striped. Ugh, it's it's kind of, it's a little frightening. Thank God it wasn't filmed in 3D. But uh, David Bowie in The Labyrinth. Have you seen this, Muto? So, okay, let me explain something to you. And we did not plan this at all. I watched this movie last Saturday. Okay, do you know by, what by myself, talking about? By myself. I actually love that movie. It was, I don't know why it was on. Jessica was out of town and I was like, or she was like in some event. I, I watched this Saturday. That's how recently I watched this movie. So no it was way. like my favorite yeah. as a kid for sure. Yeah, it, it holds up pretty good except for a couple weird singing parts. You're like, yeah, the, the CGI the with this? the owl. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a couple singing parts and the tight pants kind of ruins it for yeah. a little while. Did Jessica see this with you? No, she she oh, she's I, out. When we when Has we like first it? got married, I think I made her watch it. She's not as biggest fan as I am. I feel like you have to start it as a child or it's too late. If you don't watch it as a child, it's too late. <laughs> that might be true. Yeah, this movie came out in 1986, which is that golden era, 84 to 86, yeah. that golden era of movies. 
But yeah, I think it's a, I'm going to give this three out of five max. It holds up pretty good uh, for the crowd nowadays. They're used to these crazy CGI movies and nonstop action. So this is a little slower pace. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like Muppet characters, not CGI. So they look kind of, they look like Muppet characters. I like Alex. That Alex says that movie slaps. I agree. I would agree with you, Alex. Dude, that movie's fire. Hoggle. Dude, you got to give Hoggle some props. That's right. And when they enter that maze and there's that little oh, yeah. that little slug thing that gives her a bog of eternal thing. stench, dude, it's got it all. <laughs> got it down. <laughs> uh, this is a little more modern movie. Um, I've been recently re-watching this. Uh, it's, it uh, stars Keanu Reeves. It, when it first came out, it was kind of confusing. It was, a, it was like the first movie that had an actually really good CG. There's a scene where they lean back. It's really famous. And these bullets go sl- swinging by their heads. And it looked in the theater when you saw this the first time, uh, it was incredible. You're like, oh my gosh, how do they even do that? The computers are finally getting uh, powerful enough to make the CG look like actually legit. Uh, this came out, just the commercial alone, I think made this movie super popular. Seeing all that awesome CG has killer fight scenes in it. A lot of karate scenes, uh, uh, stuff that's uh, moves that weren't being done. And it for, kind of first came out in this movie where it was like they would have these slow motion pauses and these kicks. Uh, Keanu Reeves, and that is The Matrix. Another reason I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this in, Muto, is because they are making a part four. There's three parts, uh, and part four is supposed to be coming out, I guess. Yeah, I saw that. Far away. A movie came out when I was in high school, and I remember it was like, dude, it blew everybody's mind for sure. It was like, it was the movie to see. It was pretty, 1999. It, was yeah. it came out. Yeah, you remember yeah. it. The commercial, you're like, holy smokes! Yeah. And then people that saw it were like, oh, I want to go see that again, just because yeah. it was kind of, it was, it was kind of the story was kind of overwhelming. You're like, what the heck's the Matrix? Right, what is right. this? I couldn't figure it out. And then after seeing it one or two times, now I've got the story down, and uh, I just enjoy seeing it now. The characters are are, are, are so good, and I think it was casted perfectly too. The characters yeah. are Morpheus. It was, it was great. Uh, yeah, they're all all great characters. So. That is my movie reviews. Muto, thanks for having me on. Thanks for allowing me to do movie reviews. Yeah, man. They we're anti-establishment here. You guys turn <laughs> Brian to DFA. That's what happens. We're going to welcome here. You got to get on Brian. For those of you guys who don't know, check out Brian on, um, he does a show with, um, they do Facing with Roman and Brian every Wednesday, actually at uh, 7 PM at the same time. Uh, a lot of you guys here, you, watch the show you most of the viewers here came from that show to watch my show but some of you guys i know are new to this that watch here that don't watch the other stuff and i know I, I see a lot of you guys over there now that have gone over so if you're watching this on youtube or you're watching the rewind um yeah go check it out so bay fishing with roman and brian 7 p.m uh it's a show just like this um they get some knowledge they co-host it so it's good stuff hey i just want to give a shout out to my guys zach eric muto salty sea samurai What's up, guys? Uh, hopefully, I'll see you guys soon. Everybody have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, looking forward to getting out there December 4th and seeing everybody at Barry Macmas, too. So I'm going to get out this weekend. Uto, I'm going to snack some grass and catch some bass. I'll catch you later. Oos. Welcome. Thank you. You guys, Brian likes to fish everybody. Sorry, no dad jokes. I don't think he came prepared for that. But, um, yeah, Brian likes to fish. Welcome. Hope you guys enjoyed that. We got to get him his movie review love. I'm trying to keep him back. I'm trying to get him back. I'm trying to get him back in the MMFC, guys. We need your help. We need to make him happy. Can't let DFA have him. Um, yeah, it looks like we're out of time, guys. Oh, yeah, I wanted to ask. Um, Chris had a question. Hey, does anyone know the actual regulations of A-Rigs and Saltwater? There is no regulations, Christopher. You want to run 30 hooks? Put 30 hooks on that thing. Um. It's not like freshwater where you only need two hooks. Um, you can do as many hooks as you want. Brian made one that had like legit like 16 hooks on it or something like a chandelier. The only thing is you can't target rockfish. Uh, but if you're looking for halibut, you're looking for bass throughout the bay, dude, drag as many hooks as you want through that thing. There is no regulation of saltwater hooks. It's as many hooks as you can handle or as many rods as you can handle in the saltwater. Um yeah, it's like salty. Two hooks for rockfish. So it's yes, that is that is a thing. So if you catch, if you happen to catch a rockfish or a sculpin or something that's regulated with the two hook regulation, you have to throw it back. But if you're dragging that thing with five hooks on it, you're not going to get busted. You won't get in trouble. But you will have to release a rockfish. Also, if you catch a rockfish in your boat, 
uh, I would not fish the A-Rig anymore. So anytime you've got a rockfish uh, or something like that on your boat, it's usually a good idea to not be using more than two hooks because you're not going to be able to validate how you caught it. You might have a single hook on a dropper loop and you keep, you caught a rockfish or a sculpin and you want to keep it, but then you say you're going to go fishing for uh, spotted bay bass or halibut or sand abs or something with like six hooks. You're, you're kind of in... I don't, you, you're going to have trouble explaining that to um, a warden or something if you get pulled over. So keep that in mind. If you catch a rockfish, toss it back. And if you do have a rockfish on the boat, it's probably not a good idea. But aside from that, dude, go crazy. Run those hooks. You can't just walk out. <laughs> you can't, man. Brian's had enough. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, also, Thanksgiving's coming up next week. Uh, I guess I'll do a poll. Do you guys want to have a show? And Officially Hour is not having a show next week. Um, obviously, I wouldn't do one Thursday, probably Thursday or Friday. But I think uh, Monday, Tuesday would probably be a good day. So um, if you guys want to do a show, let me know. I'm willing to do one. I don't really have anything going on. If you guys just want to relax, get a break from the fishing talk, uh, that's cool too. We can skip a whole week. But um, I'll leave that up to you guys. So comment on here. If you want to have a show or you want a week break from, from watching streams, like I said, I, it, it won't be Thursday. So I think it'll probably be probably even do Monday, Monday or Tuesday. Like I said, I, I won't be in the, won't be up there with fishy hours. So if we get enough votes, we'll do it. Dead sand bass if not, not a big deal. It's going to be a dead sand bass under your pillow, right? <laughs> yeah. Beheaded. <laughs> Hey, he's DFA now. All right, guys. Yeah, so we'll we'll keep up on it. If you guys want the show, um, just let me know on like a Discord or something like that, or just text. Maybe we'll do a poll on Instagram if you guys want the show or what. Skip a week and what? Talk to my family. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday or Friday. Oh yeah, you guys, you guys are chiming in now. Tuesday or Friday. Maybe maybe I do a Tuesday then. Maybe I just do a Tuesday show. Um, if you guys are down for that. Yeah, so let's plan on that, guys. Let's plan on like a, sh a show Tuesday. And then um, if you guys will be around, maybe if even a lot of people aren't around, even if there's five of us, whatever, maybe I'll just do the show. I don't really have anything going on. I'll go see family um, out in the desert Palm Springs area later this week. But I think I'm leaving just that Thursday. So I'll be open. Yeah, Tuesday. So why don't we plan for a Tuesday show? Um, I guess it'll be the only show next week. A fishy Hour won't have one. But um, if you guys aren't subscribed to Fishy Hour, go check it out. It's cool hanging with you guys. Brian, thank you for coming in. Uh, that was super cool. Thank you for doing the movie reviews. Um, like having you on. Ruben, El Sueño, welcome. Captain Doug, glad you can make it. I uh, didn't see you in here. Thank you for joining. Uh, yeah, set it on the calendar, guys. Tuesday, I guess Tuesday it is. We'll be there. Thank you for joining. It was good seeing you guys. And uh, we'll see you guys out there on the water. Thanks for joining. Oos.